it's Bridget in the Museum Stitcher. Welcome back to my channel for a very special video. Today is June 22nd of 2023 and I'm filming my mid-year whip parade for this year. So I started my channel about a year ago with a mid-year whip parade and I think they're a fantastic way to lay hands on all of your projects, get an overview of what you've done through the year, take good progress pictures, all of those kinds of things. So I probably will continue doing two whip parades every year one around the summertime and one around Christmas, just because I really like them. And I know you guys like to watch them, so that's what we're gonna be doing today. So um, if you're not familiar, <laughs> hi, my name is Bridget. This is my channel where I talk about cross-stitch. I also talk about my other crafty things, but today is only cross-stitch. So if you like what you see, go ahead and like and subscribe and all of those kinds of things. And the whip parade today, we're gonna do it a little bit differently than I've done my last few. So. I'm going to start off with like a two minute introduction just in case you're new to my channel and you don't know who I am. I'll tell you just a little bit about who I am, but then we're going to hop straight into the projects. And today we're going to segment the whip parade into three sections because my friend Lauren, the New Hampshire stitcher, had a fantastic idea of showing the things that she has since finished from her last whip parade. And I like the idea of tying up all of the loose ends from my last whip parade and getting to see all of those kinds of things. So we're gonna start by doing things that I mentioned in my last whip parade that I have finished. Then we'll go into the traditional whip parade where I show you all of my projects that I have started since I started stitching, um, which is a lot. I think there's 30 of them today. In my last whip parade, I had 26. So I'm feeling pretty good about that number. Um, and then after that, I figured we would talk about the things that I have started and finished since I filmed my last whip parade. So these are projects that normally wouldn't make it into any of my whip parades, but I figured they deserved some screen time. So if that sounds good to you, that sounds good to me. So let's hop into the introduction and then get going on all these projects. I have a feeling today is going to be a rather long video considering there's 30 cross stitch projects that I'm going to be talking about, plus finishes. So, Let's get into it, shall we? Okay, so like I said, my name is Bridget. Uh, I'm called a museum stitcher because I work in a museum. I have a master's degree in museum studies and I have a bachelor's degree in history. So I'm a huge nerd and I've been a crafter my entire life. I grew up knitting and quilting and through quilting, I found cross stitch and I've been cross stitching for about two years now. I started my floss tube channel one year ago and it's definitely the longest that I've stuck with a single craft consistently every single day almost. And I love it so, so much. I am so incredibly thankful for all of you who have followed along with my stitching journey. Um, but I live in Texas, I, I live in Fort Worth. I am a Fort Worth native and it's just the area that I grew up in and that I stuck in. I was lucky enough to get a job and start my career here. And yeah, I think that's a bit about me. I also, read and knit and quilt and I bake a little bit. I like to make coffee. I have two cats, which you will probably hear throughout this video because my youngest cat, Fergus, he has one eye and he has woken up from his nap with a vengeance. So you might hear him, he is wrestling around in his toy bin. Um, but we're a big fan of, you know, animal noises here cause you really can't avoid them when you live with them. Um, also my dad decided today would be a great uh, day to uh, go outside and chop wood. So you might hear outside noises as well. I'm doing my best, okay? Uh, I was supposed to have the house to myself and he decided to take work off. So we're, we're working with what we got. Okay, so that's enough about me. Um, and let's get into what I have talked about in a past whip parade that I have since finished. Okay, so first up, we have Bayoun Cat by Owl Forest Embroidery. I started this project on September 28th of 2021, and I finished it just a couple days ago on June 21st of 2023. This will actually be the first time that I've talked about this project um, as a finish. I haven't even shown it on my regular channel yet. Um, so that is very, very exciting. But this is a picture of what it looked like during my last whip parade. And this is the finish. So I stitched this with the kit fabric and the kitted owl forest flosses. I ordered this from Russia back in 2021 and it had been sitting at about 90% complete all year. I basically went through and finished out this tree and this line underneath here 
and then I backstitched my initials and called it a day. There is a row of mice that runs under the tree line, but I don't think they're necessary. And Jen of Delicious Threads, I saw her finish of the whale from this series at StitchCon, and uh, she showed me her cat. She also didn't stitch the mice, and I thought it looked amazing. So I am definitely copying her here. But it's the first time it's been featured as a finish on my channel. This was previously my oldest whip. So it's very nice to not have this at the top of my pile anymore. And I cannot believe it just took one more day of stitching to get it fully, to get it finished. Not fully finished, but to get it done. It is so cool. And the variegation on these flosses is absolutely amazing. So love that one. Okay, next up. Since my last whip parade, I finished Love Games by Modern Folk Embroidery. I've talked about this one a lot on my channel, and it's not going to slow down anytime soon. Um, so this is what it looked like in my last whip parade. And I made significant progress on this one um, because I finished it. But I recharted the quote on this one. This is stitched on some 28 count Stay With The High Lord Even Weave from Fangirl Fibers. And... Um, I stitched it with Salem Light Floss by Color and Cotton. I recharted the quote to be a quote from A Court of Thorns and Roses, the book series. And this is how it came out. I'm absolutely in love with it. I started this one on May 14th of 2022, finished it on June 10th of 2023 at StitchCon. It's big, so I need to go ahead and go get this one framed. Okay, the next project since my last whip parade that I have decided to finish is kind of a UFO, kind of a done, done with it situation. This is Platinum Jubilee Flora by Siren Stitchworks. I love this chart. I think it is so beautiful, um, but I don't know that I'm going to go through and put in the work to finish this one because it is pretty dense, but it is so lovely. So here's where I'm at. And I've UFO'd this, but my plan is to go through and rip out this E and the two and actually turn it into a little triangular bookmark because I love the flower and I don't want to waste the stitching, but I just don't feel called to work on this one anymore. And I have so many other whips that really need attention. So this one is a finish for now um, until I go back through and fix it. But I started this last summer. Um, and I just haven't felt the call to work on it since. Okay, next up is the Scissor Sampler by Tellen Emblem. This chart is so stunning, and I'm so, so happy to have this finished. This is what it looked like um, as of my last whip parade, and I started this for my friend Alexis of Alexis underscore My Amazing World's 34th birthday. She asked everyone to start four projects, so I did, and this was, I think, the third of the four. So I started this on August 20th of 2022, Finished it on March 16th of 2023. This is stitched on some 32 count Tyco Linen by Picture This Plus and uh, with all the called for threads. Stunning. This chart is so gorgeous. The only changes I made is I did stitch my initial letters in red. Um, and then the two and three I did in red because I finished it in 2023. Other than that, it's exactly as called for. Okay, and that is everything. Um, well, actually, okay, there's one UFO. So I UFO'd the Dark Queen of the Earth. It just wasn't calling to me. I didn't love the design. So um, I nixed that one. So that is everything I have since finished or UFO'd or de-kitted since my last whip parade. And so now we can actually get into the finishes finishes. Uh, let me get situated and I'll be right back. Okay, now that finishes are over, let's get into my actual whips. I have 30 projects going at the moment, which is a little bit higher than I'd like it to be, but if I can end the year at 30, I'll be happy. So my oldest whip comes from 2021. This is my last remaining 2021 whip. So exciting. Um, I started the year with four of these. So I um, have picked one to be a restart, so it's in my kitted projects. I gave one away and I finished one, and this is the last one remaining. So actually, you know what? This is Woodland Wonder by Glendon Place. <laughs> Let me give you the overview pictures first. And this is what it looked like in my last whip parade. I did work on this pretty heavily this Christmas. I started this on Christmas Day in 2021. It was my Christmas Day start. And this is what it looks like right now. 
So I have officially finished almost all the stitching. I just have a few random snowflakes like these to pop in around the antlers. And then I just have beading left. So this piece is beaded. This is on a 32 count vintage country mocha linen with the call for DMC and there is Krynik. I'll do my best to see if you can see it, but the antlers are all in Krynik, so they're sparkly. And the needle minder on this one is from Mad for Minders. I have all of my needle minders and project bags out here to show you. Uh, I keep this one in a dot dot goose project bag with everything. Um, but because I am so close, I really would like to knock this out here in the next few days. Uh, few days, <laughs> the next few months. Uh, definitely we'll have this done before Christmas season of this year because I want to display it so bad. I first saw this project um, as a, oh, what's the term? <laughs> a giveaway. Wow, words. Words have failed me right now. Um, anyway, I first saw this project as a giveaway on the Steel City Stitchers channel and I fell in love with it. It's so beautiful. Okay, next project up is At The Met by Mirabilia. This was my new year, new start for the year 2022. Um, we are now moving into the 2022 whips. So bear with me. And this is what this one looked like at my last whip parade. I do believe I've gotten some progress in. I think I worked on this while we had um, about a week of snow here in Texas. And this is what she looks like now. So I am stitching her um, with all the call for threads on a piece of fabric that I dyed myself. I was inspired by uh, Melissa the Starless Stitchers finish of this one. And so I dyed a piece of fabric to look like hers. Just with Brit dye, this is some 28 count even weave that I just got at the store. I was so new to stitching at this point. Um, but I believe I finished all the black in this part of her dress and I've done a good chunk of the belt. So I just have to finish that out and the black over here and then I can start working up onto her head and face. Uh, but this one is stunning and I really need to get back to working on her. I probably should start participating in the Mirabilia Mondays from Maggie of Kitchy Whips just to actually work down some progress on her because I have a lot of mirrors in my stash and this is the only one I've started. I have limited myself to one going at a time. I might start a second one just because I have Autumn Queen by Mirabilia, which is an out of print chart and I really wanna get progress in on her. So yeah, started this one on January 1st of 2022 and that's where she's at so far. All right, next whip comes from April of 2022. This is the bookcase by Galliana Cross Stitch. Um, she's actually retiring as a designer. So right now all of her charts are um, percentages off on Etsy. So if you want one of these charts, you need to go snag it now before you can't get it anymore. So uh, this is what it looked like the last time I showed it. I was so inspired to stitch this by Shelby of Stitches by Shelby here on Floss Tube. She did a rainbow conversion on her bookshelf and it is so beautiful. And this is what it looks like now. I have not touched this since my New Year's Eve 12 by 12. I worked on this for about an hour. So it only has one hour more of progress than it did in my last whip parade. But this is some 36 count Highland Linen by Picture This Plus. And I'm doing my own color conversion. The bookcase itself is being stitched in uh, color and cotton black walnut. And I'm doing like a pale Southwestern conversion for the books, but I am getting the actual full bookcase finished before I do that. Um, I am keeping this one in a project bag that I made myself uh, with some bookmark fabric. I believe it's Sharon Holland fabric. And it is just so, so stunning. So I really need to get back to this one. Um, I am stitching it two over two on 36, so it's a little bit more puffy than I normally do. And the needle minder from this one is also from Mad for Minders. Okay. Sorry, trying to stay organized and it is so difficult to do that with all of these whips. Okay, next up is a whip that I have worked on fairly recently. This is the Fox by Cottage Garden Samplings. And this is what it looked like in my last whip parade. I have gotten significant progress on this. I started this May 7th of 2022. And here's what she looks like, or he looks like, whatever. Uh, needle minders from Fangirl Fibers and I have since finished his entire head um, and 
most of his body. I just have his hind leg left. This is on a 40 count morning mist linen by Forbidden Fiber Company with all of the called for threads, which is mostly DMC. So I am hoping for a finish on this one rather soon. I think just a few more days of work and I'll have it done. And then I'm going to start another one from this series, which will probably be the woodpecker. It's just, I mean, it's so little, it's so portable and it's easy to stitch, honestly. The only thing I wish is that the chart came as a PDF. That's my only complaint. Okay, next up is Spring Quakers by Rosewood Manor. I am doing all of the pieces in this series. At least that's my plan. I have not started all the pieces in this series yet. Um, but this is what it looked like in my last whip parade and it looks exactly the same right now. I'm stitching this on the call for fabric, which is a 28 count Valor linen. Yes, by Picture This Plus with the call for Valdani threads. I am keeping this one Oh, sorry, I forgot the project bag on the last one. Um, the fox is in a fox project bag from Little, Eight, Little Boat 88, which is too perfect. And this one I'm keeping in just a scrap fabric project bag that I made that is not very good. <laughs> um, but basically I was having a little bit of a crisis on stitching it with the Valdani because the Valdani is very thick. It's probably the equivalent of three stranded DMC. And on the picture of this plus, it's just very puffy, but it's beautiful. And I have decided that I'm going to continue on and do it as called for. I was also toying with the idea of switch, switching out the fabric on this one, because I don't love this green. Um, I was playing with like a lavender, but ultimately I think I'm just going to continue on with how it is, but I probably won't start to work on it until next spring. Um, just because I don't know, I never feel called to this one anymore. Okay, next up is an oldie but a goodie. Sorry, I'm having an issue staying organized here. Okay, next up is an oldie but a goodie. This is my mini mystery mandala number three by Chatelaine Designs. I have gotten significant progress on this one since I have last showed it to you um, in my last whip parade. And I'm stitching mine on a 28 count Mushroom Lugana by Zweigart with the call for MPI and other threads. So since you've seen it, um, I have done this entire cross and most of this outside border. Um, I just have to finish, these are like Smyrna crosses right here or road stitches, they're road stitches. And I just have to do the last line of road stitches here um, and a little bit of beading to finish the second part in the chart, it's divided into three sections, and this is the second section. My friend Maddie of Kitty Stitch on Instagram has finished this, and it is absolutely stunning. So I can't wait to have this done. Uh, when I finish this one, I do have a large chatelaine that I intend on starting, uh, but I want to finish this smaller one before I commit to the really, really big one. So I started that on May 19th of 2021. Okay. Next up is Memorial Day by Hands On Design. I started this in honor of my late grandmother. She was born on Memorial Day and so this piece seemed a little too perfect. It definitely would have been right up her alley as well, even though it's not my normal stitching style. But I'm stitching this on some 18 count cornflower Ada. I started this on Memorial Day of 2022. And this is what it looked like in my last whip parade. I have gotten some good progress. I really only tend to work on this project over Memorial Day weekend. So it is a slower going whip than some of my others, but I have done about 2000 stitches on it and I have finished the first flag and the entire quote and the entire clothesline that was all just partially started last time you've seen it. So I'm stitching this with the call for sulky threads, which are stunning by the way. Let me show you have the threads here. So this is what they look like. When they come off the spool, you use one strand and it gives the coverage of about one and a half strands of DMC, which is perfect on the 18 count. Keeping this in a project bag by Creative Carol Designs on Etsy, it's beautiful. I love it so much. And yeah, this project just reminds me of my grandmother, which is why I 
continue to work on it. I have recharted the center flag to be a Texas flag since I am from Texas. And then I'll do the other flag as called for. Okay, next up, we have uh, the piece that I started for Pride last year. This is Modern Folk Embroidery's Move Forward in Love. I think I've gotten, I don't think I've gotten much progress in on this one since my last whip parade, if any. I am sitting at a, a little over halfway finished with it. Uh, I started it on June 1st of last year. Um, and this is what it looks like. So this is a charity pride pattern by Modern Folk Embroidery. And I'm stitching the monochromatic version and I'm stitching it 46 count over the moon linen by color and cotton with Forbidden Fiber Company Dark Cherry as the floss. And I'm keeping this one in a project bag by Little Boat 88. It's Tula Pink's Dripping Roses, which is so pretty. But yeah. I just need to get back to this one. I spent so much time working on my love gains that I kind of monochromatic out for a moment. So uh, I'll get back to this. I would love to have this finished this summer so it's not taking up any more space, but it is so lovely. Jacob of Modern Folk Embroidery has amazing patterns and my Schitt's Creek Needle Minder is from Fangirl Fibers. Okay, next up is the Tudor Rose Biscornu by Heartstring Samplery. I started this one on, when did I start this? June 18th of 2022. And I'm keeping it in this project bag that I got from the 805 Stitcher. It's so cute. Um, she fussy cut out the city of London and the city of Paris on the back since I visited both of those places while I was studying abroad um, in undergrad. This one is one of the few that is still on the Q-snap because it's just positioned perfectly. Um, but I don't believe I've worked any more on this. I might have. I'm not sure. Um, but basically, the, the reason I haven't gotten more progress in on this one is because the reds that I recolored um, are blending too much. So I'm losing all of this dimension and like differentiation because my reds look exactly the same and you cannot see it. So I am going to rip out the lighter red and switch to another lighter red. Um, the reds were the only things I changed about the pattern. Everything else I'm doing as the called for DMC. And Needle Minder is from Mad for Minders. It is a Tudor Rose, which was just too perfect to pass up. This is on some 36 count cream and sugar linen by Fiber on a Whim, which is one of my favorite neutral fabrics. And she's stunning. Okay, next up is Summer Quakers by Rosewood Manor. I keep this in a project bag that I made myself out of some Lori Holt fabric. And I am stitching this one with my friend Megan, the Seattle Stitcher. This was my very first stitch along that I ever started on my channel. And it is so much fun. I actually got to take a picture of it with Megan as a finish not as a finish, as a whip, um, and got to see hers in person, which is stunning. But I'm stitching mine on a 28 count coastal linen by Picture This Plus, and I don't believe I've done anything on it since you've seen it last, but it is so stunning, I still had to show it. So I'm stitching this with the Call For Baldani threads. I started this on June 25th of 2022. Let me show you my floss ring, because it is so pretty. These are the Valdani threads, just like the last Quaker, seasonal Quaker design. Um, they are thick, but they are beautiful. I mean, look at the variegation on this pink to purple one. It's just too good. Um, but they are thick. I have these on some Adam Hart floss drops in the pink Stardust color. And I will be pulling this out here shortly to get some more progress on it in the season because it is summer Quakers and it is the middle of the summer. So um, we'll be pulling that one out relatively soon. It is so, so pretty. All right, let's see. Yeah, I just showed you the project bag for that one. There's a lot of things you have to keep up with when you're doing a whip parade like this. So hope you're hanging in there. Okay, next up is Miss Bingley's Library by Plum Street Samplers. Uh, my friend Megan also inspired this start and this pattern is so cute. I really need to finish it because I think I could knock it out pretty fast. 
Um, but I started this one. When did I start this one? I started this July 2nd of 2022. And I don't, I think I've stitched for a little bit on this one, but this is what it looks like. I am still in roof fill-in. So I think that's where I was when I last shared this. Uh, but this is on some 36 count limited edition color and cotton with the called for threads, needle minders from Mad for Minders. And she's stunning. I keep this one in a project bag from Jasmine Custom Bags. She did this one for me and the fabric is just too perfect. The called for threads on this one are Weeks Dye Works and it is very neutral. Like it's very prim, the colors. I did rechart the bird to be a cat, but it shows up better in person than it does on camera. I do have a little gray cat, so that's what I styled this one after. Okay, next up is Rejoice Evermore by Brenda Gervais of With Thy Needle and Thread. I started this one on July 8th of 2022. And I know I've worked on this one, maybe not the craziest amount, but I have gotten some progress um, since I have last showed it to you in a whip parade. But this one I am stitching uh, on 46 count porcelain linen by Leo and Roxy with the Leo and Roxy conversion. And this is what it looks like. Porcelain linen is the most gorgeous cream colored fabric, like a white cream, not like a ivory cream. But I have finished all the strawberries on this border and started in on the yellow inner border. Let me show you the floss ring for this one. I keep this one in a project bag that I got from Evertote, which is the Canadian shop that sells Leo and Roxy floss. It is so cute. I love this, these florals. And their project bags are really well made. And these are on some Adam Hart thread hearts, just the plain clear acrylic ones. And this is my floss ring. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous conversion. So definitely need to get more done on this. Uh, Lauren, the New Hampshire stitcher is also working on this. She's a lot farther than I am though. I, um, this one of the things about stitching on 46 count fabric is it looks like you make progress slower when you're making the same amount of X's regardless. Um, but yeah, definitely need to get back to that one. All right, next up is uh, Olivia, uh, nope. Next up is the floral motif sampler. So I started this one um, actually, I think I worked on this one for a little bit since I've last showed it to you. I was planning on working on it yesterday, actually, which is why this is the only whip that is not iron. Um, but I ended up doing organization in my craft room instead of stitching last night. So I believe it looks just a little bit different than when you've last seen it. I'm stitching mine on 40 count flannel flower linen by Fox and Rabbit with the Call for Gentle Arts. And I think I have done the black fill-in on these flowers and I've started in on this white basket here. Needle minders from Mad for Minders. Yeah, <laughs> it's not very much, but you know what, it's a start. And my friend Marjorie of Marjorie Made is also stitching this piece and she uh, made the good point that this is a good piece for mini finishes because basically every time you finish one of these tiny little florals, you feel like you've accomplished something. And it's really nice to have those kinds of projects around for when you need like progress without putting in a lot of stitches. Okay, next up is Olivia Ockerleaf by Silver Creek Samplers. This is the last remaining project for my friend Alexis's um, birthday salve. The last of the four that I have not finished. So I love this piece, it's so beautiful. And I don't think I've worked on it any since you've last seen it, but you know, it's fine. So I started this August 22nd of 2022 and I'm stitching it on 32 count vellum linen by Picture This Plus with the called for threads. It is so pretty. Like, I don't think the model of this does it justice. 
just the the colors and everything i am going to have to rechart right here because um the year and the initials are not the year i'm stitching it and the initials uh, but i would love to have this done this year i think i can accomplish it i only have the girl left and the smallest bit of this border so i think it's really manageable the needle minder is an outlander needle minder from mad for minders there's a theme mad for minders makes the best needle minders in my opinion they're so good uh, so yeah, love that one. Okay, next up, we start to get into a lot more seasonal projects. Uh, so this next one is a Halloween piece. This is uh, the wrong Halloween piece, sorry. Organization is important. Okay, this is the Haunted Library by Lola Crow Cross Stitch. This was a mystery stitch along last year that I joined very late, so I am very behind on it. Um, and I don't think I've worked on it any since you have seen it last. But I started this on October 1st of 2022 and it is stitched on 40 count Heather by Fiber on a Whim. I am about 4,500 stitches out of 1,600. So just about a quarter of the way done with it. But she is stunning. I am doing another Lola Crow stitch along right now. So I really need to get back to this one. I am hoping for a finish on it this year, but I think that might be a little bit of a lofty goal considering I have other Halloween whips that I would like to devote time to. Okay, next up is Halloween Quaker by Lila Studio. Um, I think this is going to end up being a restart for me. I have not fully decided yet. This is a stitch along that I'm doing with Heather the 20 minute stitcher here on floss tube. Um, and I have not worked on this. No, I I worked on this during my New Year's Eve 12 by 12. So I got about an hour's worth of progress since you've seen it last. Um, but I am stitching mine on a 40 count, what is this fabric? Midnight Ride Linen by X2 Designs. And I love this fabric. I think it is gorgeous, but I think I went too out of my style on it. So um, it is really cool. But I think it's a little too crazy and it's not me. I just kind of got excited about doing a funky fabric and I didn't pick the right one for this project. So I have some backup fabric on the way and I will be restarting this. I'm only about 400, 500 stitches into it. So it's not a big deal. Um, I'm so, so, so behind on this. But it is a stunning project and I know so many people who have this going right now and I really want to get good progress in on it. I started this on October 3rd of... No, September 3rd of 2022. I think I started Haunted Library in September too, so I wrote down my dates wrong. Okay, next up is another stitch along with my friends Megan and Alexis. Alexis, did you start this? I can't actually remember now. I think she did. This is Autumn Cloche by Hello from Liz Matthews. I have not worked on this since you've last seen it. <laughs> There is a theme to these later year patterns. Okay, anyway, I'm stitching mine on a 40 count hazel wood linen by Fiber on a Whim. This is what she looks like. My friend Maddie of Kitty Stitch has also finished this chart and it is stunning. I do have some pretty significant progress in on this one, but it is a rather large project. I started this on September 8th of 2022. And I am doing Oh, I have been so bad at showing project bags. Uh-oh. Okay, anyway, quick project bag rundown. This is floral motif with all the gentle arts in my Tiger Lily Designs project keeper. Then this is the mesh bag that I had Olivia Ockerleaf in. This uh, Beauty and the Beast bag is what I have Haunted Library in with my DMC ring. And this is the Halloween Quaker bag by a Little Boat 88. Okay, <laughs> this project bag uh, was actually sent to me by my friend Megan, the Seattle Stitcher. She made this and it is beautiful, but I am stitching the Leo and Roxy floss conversion for this, which they made for me. I reached out to Hannah and she whipped this up like in a couple hours. It is so, so stunning. Leo and Roxy conversions are some of my favorite conversions because if you email them, they will make it for you and just invoice you one time for it. It's so easy. I love working with them so much and 
The flosses are looking rather amazing. Like look at the variegation in that little mushroom. This is such a cool chart and I want to make some more progress on it this year as I do with all of my projects. Okay, we're coming into the last few 2022 whips. So the next one is another stitch along with my friends, surprise, surprise, of Megan and Alexis. And this is Christmas Garden by Blackbird Designs. I have not worked on this since you've seen it, but um, I am planning on doing some significant progress on this in July. My friend Marjorie is going to be focusing heavily on Christmas in July, and I thought it was an excellent idea. So I am doing my full conversion for this one. This is on some 36 count assemblier linen by Color and Cotton, which is this gorgeous reddish gingerbread color. And I did my own Color and Cotton floss conversion using brighter colors than the called for, and I did swap the gold for a white since it's on this deeper colored fabric. I have already gotten to the point where I have my grandfather's initials in here. And I accidentally stitched this whole giant motif half a stitch off. So I do have some counting errors to fix when I get back to this one. But I spent a significant chunk of the Christmas season last year stitching on this. And I could not be happier with it. It is so, so stunning. And I think everyone should stitch this. It is located in the Blackboard Designs Home for the Holidays book. You cannot just buy the chart outright. At least I don't think you can. Uh, but it is so worth, worth it. And that book has a whole bunch of other beautiful patterns. And, you know, if you are a Blackboard stitcher, you, got, you know you have to get the Blackboards when you see them. I have this in another Evertotes project bag. It is little Christmas llamas. And it's covered in cat hair. So there you go. Let me show you my flosses real quick because they are really pretty. These are the colors that I'm using. The call for colors are very prim and very um, muted. They're gorgeous though. My friend Megan is stitching it with the called for and it is gorgeous. It's just, you know, you can get a whole lot of different vibes with this one, but because it is only four colors, it is super easy to do your own color conversion on it. Okay, next up is Be Merry All by Park Hopper Bart. I believe this is the last whip that you have seen from me in a whip parade. Uh, I started this on, when did I start this? December 6th of 2022. This was an exclusive to Evertotes and it was an exclusive kit through Evertotes. Um, I started this on a 40 count silver fox linen by Fiber on a Whim. It is very faint to see the words, but they do show up in person. Mm. I have not stitched on this anymore since you've seen it in my last whip parade, but it is gorgeous. I am doing the call for Leo and Roxy threads, which is just Roxy Floss Co. now, but you know, when I bought all these, it was Leo and Roxy, so it's, you know, it kind of ingrained in my memory that way, but the flosses for this one are really, really pretty. And I love stitching this one with the called for. I think about two more days of progress and I could probably have this one finished. It is so tiny and delicate and very, very thoughtful design. I'm a huge fan of it. Okay, so that marks the end of my 2022 whips. Everything from this moment on, I started in 2023. So I'm going to take a quick water break and I'll be right back. Okay, so 2023 is off to a pretty big start. I've started quite a few things this year so far, but they are all really fun ones. So my new year new start this year was a stitch along that started by my friend Julie of Kansas City Girl in a Colorado world. And I um, started this one. This is Beatrix Potter Quaker Sampler. Sorry, I forgot to say the name of the chart. Um, but it's my new year new start. A whole bunch of people did this one. And this is my progress. I'm stitching this one on a 40 count gray magic by X2 designs with an NPI silk. I should know the number 335. Uh, I just have this one in like a dorky bag, but it is this gorgeous avocado olive green and it looks so cool on this fabric. This pattern is massive. It is like 300 stitches square and I just have not put a lot of work into it. It was probably about three days worth of stitching. I have, I think 1500 stitches in, 
right now. And it looks like nothing. <laughs> Um, needle minder is from mad for minders on this one. This is so beautiful and honestly extra designs fabric is some of my favorite fabric to stitch with It is so so beautiful And I need to get back to that one Okay, next up is my galentine's day start This is the misspelled sampler by hemlock and rye stitchery, which is julie of kansas city girl in a colorado world design brand I started this one and it is so pretty. I know my friends all have more progress than I do on this one. I think I was the slowest, but I am stitching this on a 40 count hot cocoa linen by Bestitch Me with the Call For Classic Colorworks. That's my progress. So just a bunch of border stitching. It's a very similar border to the Christmas Garden by Blackbird Designs. I keep this one in this little mesh bag. And the floss ring for this one is probably the main motivation to do this chart. I mean, it's a beautiful sampler, but these colors, which are actually the um, charted colors from the back of the sampler, are so, so stunning. I have these on some Adam Hart floss bobbins. I mean, look at those pinks. So pretty. So my friends Cam, Marjorie of Marjorie Made, um, the Seattle Stitcher, Megan, and Julie and Alexis all started this together back in February. Started this on February 23rd. No, February 15th, Valentine's Day. Um, yeah, my friends started it on the 13th, I think, but I had to wait for a package to get here. And then I have an Outlander needle minder on this one from Mad for Minders. Okay, next up is a stitch along that I'm doing with Sarah of Sarah's Stitchy Spot and Katie the Novel Stitcher. This is um, Oh Joyous Day by Blackbird Designs. I started this one on February 23rd of 2023 and it is so, so beautiful. <laughs> um, I am, I think about 3,000 stitches into this one after just like a week of work and I could not be happier with it. I am doing a color conversion on the fabric. So this is it. This is on some 40 count Nessie by Picture This Plus, which is a gorgeous blue with a twinge of teal with this gorgeous floral needle minder. I'm using all the called for flosses, fancy flosses, and it is so pretty. So I think I am the furthest behind on this stitch along right now. I've been so behind in watching Floss Tube, um, but it is such a gorgeous chart. Such a gorgeous chart. If you wanna get your hands on this one, I highly recommend it. It's also not super, super huge. So as far as Blackbirds go, it's a pretty manageable one. I think in total, it has about 13,000 stitches, which is probably a medium sized chart, but it's so springy and I just wanted some pretty spring florals that weren't summer florals and this totally fit the bill. So that's the hashtag joyous day Sal, if you are curious. All right, next up is my birthday start. This is Night Walked Down by the Blue Flower. And um, I am stitching mine on a 40 count elegant linen by Fortnite Fabrics with the call for Gentle Arts. Oh, here, real quick. This is my Project Keeper by Tiger Lily Designs that I'm keeping my old toys day in. And that's what it looks like. So I have my chart right here. And then I have all of my flosses on the Adam Hart floss bobbins that are floss drops. But I can organize them like bobbins and it makes everything super organized and ready to go. I love these so, so much. So go check out Carrie of Tiger Lily if you have not yet. She's definitely worth the watch. Okay, this is the bag for Night Walked Down. This is the project. Okay, we're back on track. Um, so this is the progress that I've gotten in the needle minders from Mad for Minders. This fabric is stunning uh, and it looks amazing so far. I really need to get more done on this one. Oh, I love everything the Blue Flower does and yeah. So let me show you the floss ring for this one. So pretty. 
I am doing mostly the call for gentle arts. I think I had to make like two substitutions because they didn't have that specific color at my LNS. I mean, look at those colors and tell me that's not gorgeous. I am so excited about this chart. It is, it's so pretty. I really need to do more on it. Okay. Next up is a fun one. I don't do a lot of super crazy colors uh, aside from like, you know, my summer Quakers fabric and even that's just a blue. But this is where I really went out of the box. This is Real Comfort by Modern Folk Embroidery. And you might be looking at the chart going, Bridget, but that looks so neutral and you'd be right. But my friend Cam of Cam the Stitcher is a color genius. And she started stitching the Beatrix Potter Quaker sampler that I showed you earlier with a pink on pink conversion and I loved it. So I copied her exactly. And I am doing this one as a pink on pink because I feel like Jane Austen would have been a pink girly. So I have done very little, <laughs> like not even 500 stitches. So, so small amount of progress, but this is on peony, 40 count peony linen by Fiber on a Whim with pink tourmaline dinky dye silk as the floss. And it is a stunning combination. I cannot wait to have this done. Let me grab my project bag here. So that's what the silk looks like. Just the hottest of hot pinks. I probably need to stitch on this since the Barbie movie is coming out and I feel like this is my Barbie movie chart, but it is so beautiful. I am debating not doing the alphabet on this sampler, but I cut my fabric um, so that if I want to do the alphabet, I have that option. I just love it. Uh, I do have a Jane Austen project bag that I just got at StitchCon, so I need to switch this over to that because it's kind of perfect for it, but that's that. Okay, next up, the Greenhouse of Oddities. This is also by Lola Crow Cross Stitch. This is the other mystery stitch along of hers that I'm doing, but this one has not been fully released yet. I am caught up to the chart as of now. This week is a bye week, so the chart was um, usually drops on Fridays, which I'm filming on a Friday. So a drop would have happened today, but it is the off week. So for now, I'm just going to enjoy being caught up, but I'm stitching mine on a 40 count dovetail linen by Forbidden Fiber Company with the call for DMC. This chart has a lot of DMCs in it. I am up to the fourth, fourth planting, which was these carnivorous plants here. You can see my camera, I cannot tell what color it wants to make this fabric, but it is like a deep gray with a purple mauve undertone. So pretty and absolutely perfect for this chart. Let me show you my DMC ring for this one. I have these on Adam Hart floss hearts. It's a lot, I told you it was a lot, but it is really, really pretty. And I can't believe I'm caught up on a stitch along and I have plans to stay caught up. So there you go. All right, next up is a pattern that I am doing a pretty heavy color conversion for. This is the Rose Quaker Sampler by Weinberg Online. Um, I, my friend Megan wanted to start this and so I jumped in with her and then I had an idea for a color conversion and I ran with it. So um, this is the mock-up of what mine will look like. So mine is going to be a Taylor Swift Eras Tour conversion. So I swapped out the 22 colors of DMC that were called for in this chart, and I swapped it out with 10 colors of DMC inspired by Taylor's album covers or Eras colors. And um, so I started this on, when did I start this? Uh, April 17th of 2023 on some 46 count Renaissance linen by Color and Cotton. So it's very small, but this is a rather large chart. So Needle Minder is from Rebel Stitcher, and um, I've done Red, Reputation, Midnights, and Fearless. I'll show you my floss ring for this one. It's a pretty steep conversion for me, but I think it's so cool. And it's a fun way to do a Taylor Swift chart without doing a Taylor Swift chart, you know? So that's my floss ring. So the only color I need to change is the Speak Now color. I went off of the original Speak Now and with Taylor's version coming out, I'm going to swap this to a more lavender shade of purple rather than a magenta shade. 
But yeah. So in order, you have Debut, Fearless, Speak Now, Red, 1989, Reputation, Lover, Folklore, Evermore, Midnights. So yeah, that is my Taylor Swift Quaker sampler, but it is a dense Quaker, so it is taking me a long time to get going on it. But yeah, it's stunning. I know there are a lot of people working on this one right now too. Okay, just a few more, so I hope you're hanging in there with me. All right, next up is a stitch along I'm doing with Lauren, the New Hampshire stitcher, and Cross Stitch Kate has finished this, and it is stunning. Uh, but this is Gentle Rain by the Blue Flower. Such a gorgeous chart. I did struggle heavily finding fabric for this. This is what it looks like. This is on a 40 count truffle linen by Picture This Plus, which always pulls more nude on camera. It is very pink in person, but it is really pretty. It's a gorgeous color for this chart. I'm doing it with the called for DMC with a couple fancy flosses. And I'm keeping this in a project bag that my friend Alexis of Alexis underscore my amazing world made for me with animal fabric. So let me show you my floss ring. That's what it looks like. They're really pretty. And I do like that the gentle, um, the gentle flower, the blue flower um, does really only call for fancy flosses where she thinks they're needed. The rest is DMC, which it's my absolute biggest pet peeve when a designer calls for a fancy floss for five stitches. Um, but you know, to each their own. Okay. I started that on April 23rd of 2023. Next up is a sal that I am doing with my friends, Marjorie, Cam, Alexis, and Megan. This is the hashtag Manning May sal, where we decided to work on a Carolyn Manning for the month of May, and it was so successful that we're definitely gonna be doing it again um, next year because I have so many Carolyn Mannings that I wanna start, but I chose Bountiful Blooms as mine, and I'm stitching it on a 16 count French Country Ada with the Call For DMC. And this is where I've gotten to. This is such an easy pattern to work on because I have actually been stitching it in hand because I can use the loop method. It's all DMC and it's a 16 count Ada. So it's so easy to just work on. I love it so, 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 so much. And um, I am just keeping this one in a Thrive Cosmetics bag that I got uh, because it fits it so well. But yeah, that is the floss ring. Don't mind the binder clip. <laughs> uh, it is so, so beautiful. <laughs> okay, I have realized I've forgotten a whip because I didn't have it with my ironed whips over here that I've been pulling from the stack. So let's uh, switch gears for a second and go back to the month of March. In March, I started my very first full coverage. This is Mini the Library Max Colors by Heaven and Earth Designs. And my friend Marjorie was hosting a full coverage stitch along um, entitled the hashtag rip my whip sell. And so this is my floss box. It has 124 colors in this one chart. And I have all of mine on the Adam Hart floss bobbins, which has made it so easy to stitch. Okay, so I wasn't even sure that full coverage was going to be for me, but because my friend Marjorie was doing it, I figured it was the perfect time to just try it. And so I did a mini haid, so it's not the biggest full coverage that I could do, but I'm loving it. This is what it looks like. Um, I've gotten pretty significant progress on this, and I'll actually probably be pulling this out later today because my friends and I have a thing where, because we started this in 2023, we are working on our full coverage on the 23rd of every month, which is so much fun. So this is my addition to the Rip My Whip Cell and I'm loving full coverage. I'm doing the Royal Rose method, which basically means I'm working in a 10 by 20 column and then parking all of the threads that will be used in the underneath column. So it's taking a little bit longer to get through the top row, but the entire width of the piece will fit in this Q snap. It goes to about here. So that's exciting. It really isn't huge, huge. Uh, it's only 88,000 stitches, which I know sounds like a lot, but in the realm of full coverage, it's very small. Um, for reference, my Bountiful Blooms 
this is essentially full coverage and this one has about 23,000 stitches. So as far as stitchability, it's not crazy more than that, um, but it is so much fun. So I am keeping this in the Q snap because easy. <laughs> And this is going to be a whip for a really long time, which is why I have, it's basically, it's like a quarter set of DMC in here with this project. Um, but yeah, there is a new full coverage piece that's been circulating the floss tubes for a hot minute. It's like the woman in a field of flowers and it is so beautiful and I'm actively trying to not stitch that. So I hope that you're hanging in there. We have two more active whips and then a couple of starts and finishes since my last whip parade. So let's do it. Okay. Next up is my whip anniversary start. So um, I started this on June 4th of 2022. This is the Black Butterfly Sampler by Shaded Stitchery. And I started this as my one year anniversary start. A bunch of my friends started it with me. So that was super fun. Um, but I am doing a color conversion. So it's not actually a Black Butterfly Sampler for me but I'm stitching mine on a 40 count Honey Linen by Be Stitch Me with Almond M&M's Silk Floss in the shade Wild Hibiscus. It is the most gorgeous warm toned plummy purple and it looks amazing on this like bright yellow fabric. I just love it so much. I'm about halfway through it. It is very small and I'm keeping this one in a little hexagon project bag that my friend Alexis made for me for my birthday. So I have my floss card with my floss on there. That's a top knot stitcher floss drop, my little scissors, and then there's a pocket over here. This pocket fits my Morgan hoop, which I tend to stitch with a seven inch Morgan hoop primarily. And I just love how this is coming out. So that should be a rather quick finish when I dedicate a couple more days to it. Okay, and there's only one more active whip. Um, I feel like I'm cheating a little bit because I do have a new start planned for tomorrow, <laughs> June 24th, um, but you know, it's fine. This is the coveted A Way We Ride by Blackbird Designs, and I actually have the physical chart, so I'll go ahead and show that to you here. I got mine from the Top Knot Stitcher. This chart recently came um, off of being out of print. And Abby, the Top Knot Stitcher, organized a start along for it at StitchCon this year. So I started it with everyone starting it at StitchCon. And this is what mine looks like. So I've only been stitching on this for about two days at StitchCon, so distracted stitching. This is on 40 Count Outrageous Linen by Fortnite Fabrics that I got while I was in Ohio. So I just have a little start on it. Needle Minder is from Mad for Minders. And I'm stitching mine with the Vicki Clayton Silk Conversion which are stunning. Um, and then I did grab this Viscount by Forbidden Fiber Company to swap out this deep orange with the reddish color because I think it fits the vibe of the model a little bit better, um, but it is stunning. I have this in a bag from the Painted Leaf Company, which is stunning. My friend Megan got the same bag, so we're bag twins. We got the last two that were there in this like corduroy fabric. It's really cool. Okay. So that is all of my active whips right now. <laughs> that was nuts. Um, so that's 30. My goal is when I film my next whip parade to still be at 30. So we're going to try and stash down some of these projects that are a little closer to a finish and be a little bit selective about what new starts I do choose to do. Okay. So I thought it would be fun to end this video by doing a little segment where I talk about the starts and finishes that I've had since my last video, because I think they all deserve to be featured in a whip parade. Uh, so let's do that. So I have these in chronological order based on when I started them, not based on when I finished them. First up, Dancer by Barbara Anna Designs. I stitched this exactly as called for. Called for DMC and called for fabric, which is a 32 count Murano splash even weave. Um, I started this on Christmas Eve of 2022 and I finished it on March 20th of 2023. I did omit there's a plaque with the date, but I didn't think it needed it. So I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to finish this one. I'm thinking just a tiny little frame, but that seems a little boring. So I'm not sure yet, but that one's a fun one. Okay. 
Then I finished Good Intentions, started and finished Good Intentions by Kathy Barrick. Started this on January 16th and finished it on January 30th of 2023. This is one of my favorite finishes of all time. Like, look how stunning she is. I stitched this on a 36 count Dusty Road Linen by Seraphim Fabrics with my own color and cotton conversion. Uh, and I also changed her hair and I changed, um, there's a dog in this chart. I changed it to a cat based on my friend Maddie of Kitty Stitches Conversion. She designed this little cat and I thought it was so, so cute. Um, and then I think that's it. That's everything I changed. But I love it so much and it fits perfectly on a 36 count in the seven inch square frame I got off of Amazon. So I'm actually gonna pop that here because it is so pretty. Then I started and finished the Bennett Sisters by Hemlock and Rye Stitchery, which is Julie of Kansas City Girl and a Colorado World's design brand. This was her Pride and Prejudice start. She has a couple charts like this. One of them is a Little Women one, and this was her Pride and Prejudice contribution. So I started and finished this in like two days. I started this on February 10th, finished it on February 11th, and then I think I FFO'd it the same day. So I have some Pride and Prejudice fabric on the back from a Riley Bake Blake, <laughs> Riley Blake fabric line a couple years ago. And I started this on a 46 count over the moon linen by Color and Cotton with just a few stash flosses. I think a couple Color and Cottons and a couple classic color works. But it is such a cute little pillow. I love it so much. All right, let's talk about um, one of my favorite finishes of this year so far. Um, this is Meet Me at Midnight by Frizzy Lizzy Stitches. Elizabeth is one of my dear friends here on Floss Tube, and she designed an amazing chart right before I was set to see a Taylor Swift. So I started this and pretty much stitched on it monogamously, and I finished it the night before I was going to see Taylor. So I started this on March 19th, and I finished it on March 30th. This is what it looks like. I stitched it on a 40 count Heather Linen by Fiber on a Whim. With mostly the call for DMC, I made one substitution just because I didn't have it in my stash. And literally she dropped the pattern on a Sunday afternoon and by Sunday evening, I had it on a hoop. So I started and finished this so fast and I just have it stuck in this cute little six inch square frame that I love and it is so much fun. So it's an Easter egg chart. It's got a whole bunch of different references to the Midnight's album. And it was just so much fun to get this started and going. So if you want to support Elizabeth, I will have her floss tube linked down here and definitely go do that. If you have a Swifty in your life, they need that chart. The next chart I started the day after I saw Taylor Swift. So I started this on April 1st of 2023. This is Blanket Flower by The Blue Flower. And this is part of the Autumn Garden palette from Market of last year or two years ago, I can't remember. Anyway, um, I did my own DMC conversion because I wanted it to be a little bit brighter, but it is called for in the Cottage Garden threads. This was a freebie, so I don't know how you get your hands on this chart anymore, but it's just a cute little blanket flower. I, did, I made mine match the actual flower, which grows all over the side of the highway here in Texas. So I loved that. My own little DMC conversion with my stash fabric. Did I say what fabric? 18 count Salt Rock Ada by Color and Cotton. Okay, and then I've only had one more to start and finish since my last whip parade. And that is Blood and Bone by Forbidden Fiber Company. I stitched this on a 40 count peanut linen or peanut even weave by Besitch Me with the kitted Forbidden Fiber Company flosses. And it is gorgeous. I did omit the top and bottom border and then I backstitched my initials. But uh, the new season of Outlander premiered last week, and so I started this little kit that I've had forever um, to honor that. So I'm planning on making this into a little pillow, but I have not done that yet. Okay, and that, my friends, is everything. So I hope that you're still around. If you've made it this far, um, go ahead and leave me a comment Let's see, let's do a yellow heart emoji if you've made it this far. Um, it is about to start pouring rain here in Texas. 
so I am finishing just in time. But I hope that you liked all of my projects. Let me know if you're stitching any of the same ones or um, what you were stitching on while you were watching this whip parade. I imagine it's probably gonna be over an hour's worth of footage that I have to share with you today. So I so, so appreciate you guys sticking with me and I hope that you will join me for my next regular floss tube update. I am also planning on filming a kit parade here rather soon because I think those are really fun to watch as well. So um, I hope that you stick around, that you like this video, subscribe, leave a comment, and I will see you in my next regularly scheduled video. Bye y'all! So I started my channel about a year ago with a mid-year whip parade and I love when my cat plays with toys at very inconvenient times. Um, anyway, if you're not familiar with a whip parade, a whip parade, I really have to go fix this cat situation, hold on. I started my channel about a year ago and with a, gotta start over again, damn.